Okay, this is 11.5 electric current. So, this lesson is uh, pretty closely linked with the last one where we were, we were looking at voltage. Voltage and current are two of the main pieces in what we're going to be looking at in this chapter. So, electric current is the movement of electrons. Or we could say the mo movement of charge. The idea is that in our circuits we have electric charge moving through our wires. And when we want to see how fast it's moving, we talk about current. And this is I is equal to Q over delta T. Which just means we're looking at how many electrons go past a point in a certain amount of time. So we're literally just talking about how fast the electrons are, are moving. And our units here, we have units of A for amps. And the full name for amps is amperes. Amperes, like this. So amps or amperes. Okay, we have two types of current. In this course, we're only talking about DC, direct current. So direct current is when electrons move in only one direction. And so we're only focusing on DC in this course, but I'll just mention what AC is. AC is alternating current. It's the other kind of current we can have. And that's where um, the direction of movement alternates. So electrons move back and forth. So they alternate directions. And like I said, we're not really focusing on AC right now. We're always talking about DC, where the electrons are just flowing forward constantly. So we're going to do a problem here. Calculate the amount of current through a wire that has 0.85 coulombs of electrons passing a point in two and a half minutes. So we have our equation here, I equals Q over delta T. Our charge here is 0.85 coulombs. That's how many electrons we have. And our time is two and a half minutes. Now I should actually do a calculation here. Delta T is equal to 2.5 minutes times 60 seconds. Well, just to set up our conversion properly here, we've got 60 seconds in one minute. So this looks like 150 seconds. So I can put 150 up here. So coulombs per second, which is going to become our units amperes. 0 0.0057 amps. There's our answer. That's how we do current. You're going to have a few problems like that on the homework. And the last bit here, we're just going to say a couple things about current. The effects of current on your body. So if you have electrical current running through you, what makes it dangerous is when you have more current. The more current you have, the more dangerous it is. So the faster the electrons are running through your body, the more harm they can do. And the kind of harm they can do is that they can make your muscles contract. And also, current can cause burns. And, of course, at extreme um, currents, those burns will be lethal. They will kill you. They can also stop your heart. Of course, the electricity could stop your heart. There's a lot of bad things that it can do. So when we're talking about bad things, well, this is when the current is greater than 0 0.05 <coughs> amps. So that's a very pretty small number. If we look at the problem above, we had 0 0.005 
amps, so that would have been safe for it to go through our body. So if the current is more than 0.05 amps, this is painful. And if the current is greater than 0 0.065, this is dangerous. So you do have to be careful. Whenever you see something that warns about a high current, you want to be sure you're not going to let that go through your body. You're not going to touch that, uh, that thing with high current. Okay, the last thing here is the ammeter. This is how we measure current. So the ammeter is used to measure current. Just like the voltmeter was used to measure volts. And like the voltmeter, we need to connect it a certain way, so it must be connected in series. The voltmeter had to be in parallel, ammeter must be in series. So those are different. The symbol for an ammeter, I'll put that over here, looks like this when we connect it to our wire. And I'll just draw a little picture as well of what our circuit would look like. So a similar circuit to last lesson goes around like this. I will have my, my lamp here. There's my lamp. And if I want to measure the current running through that lamp, I just need to put an ammeter somewhere in series with it. And notice that the electrons go through there, they go through here. Whatever speed they're going through the bulb, they have to be going the same speed through the ammeter. So we just put the ammeter, we can put it after, we could have put it before, that would have worked as well. That's how we use an ammeter. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. There's your homework problems. Enjoy!